said that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew 9 next February, uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed, and the specifics in the schedule will be discussed momentarily. Uh, I want you to know that Boeing has worked very hard with NASA to get the necessary data to make this decision. <clears throat> we want to further understand the root causes and understand the design improvements so that the Boeing Starliner will serve as an important part of our assured crew access to the ISS. I have just talked to the new Boeing CEO, Kelly Ortberg. Uh, I have expressed this to, the, to him. I told him uh, how well Boeing uh, worked with our team to come to this decision. And uh, he expressed to me uh, an intention that uh, they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and uh, that we will have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station. Uh, this whole discussion, remember, is put in the context of we have had mistakes done in the past. We lost two space shuttles as a result of there not being a, a culture in which information could come forward. Uh, we have been very solicitous of all of our employees that if you have some objection, you come forward. Space flight is risky even at its safest, safest and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. And so the decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. Our core value is safety, and it is our North Star. And I'm grateful to NASA and to Boeing for their teams, for all the incredible and detailed work to get to this decision turn it over to Jim. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you and Deputy Administrator Melroy for your support along the way and certainly for being here today. It means a lot. I'd like to communicate to all of you that we've come to this decision using our, our program, our mission directorate, and our agency level processes. That includes the decisions that happen at the commercial crew pro program, at the uh, space operations mission directorate level, and the agency level and includes all of our technical authorities from engineering, safety, medical, and flight operations. As the administrator said, our focus is on safety all the time, and this certainly is no different. The uncertainty in our margins is where we have gone, come to uh, make the decision that the administrator laid out. That uncertainty remains in our understanding of the physics going on in the thrusters, and still, we still have some work to go. You'll hear more from other on, others on the specifics, but I'll tell you that the NASA and Boeing team have made incredible technical progress in the model development that has gone on, the thruster testing, understanding material properties within the valve, and the complicated fluid physics that are happening uh, inside. We will continue uh, to, to learn. We are a learning organization, and I think we've demonstrated that here. We'll learn from this effort so that our crews who are at the top of the pyramid on these missions and their families can continue to know we've done that and we'll always do our best. For our team, our programmatic and technical teams, both NASA and the commercial crew program, 
in the space station program and our Boeing teammates have worked endlessly to get to launch and certainly in the past two months. They've done this while the whole world has gone on around them. Hurricanes, a hurricane through Florida, a hurricane through here while their homes are damaged and without power, they came to work. Some of them lost family members along the way. Their kids went back to school and life in general <coughs> went on, but they were here every day working long hours. They have persevered and I want them to know how grateful I am that they are on our team. This has not been an easy decision, but it is absolutely the right one. Let me turn it over to Ken Bowersox and thank Ken and all the leaders here and the ones that are not here with us today uh, for their work. Thanks, Jim, and thanks to you and the administrator for joining us for this press conference and for, for our meetings. You guys have been heavily involved, and we appreciate that. Um, I also want to thank everybody who's uh, here in the room with us and uh, watching online. It says a lot that you're with us on a Saturday, um, uh, and, and I want you to know how much we appreciate your support as we work to fly our mission safely. <clears throat> um, I'm really proud of the NASA team <clears throat> and the Boeing team for all the work they've been doing the last couple of months. It's really been impressive to see um, how they've uh, been very agile in testing, um, gathering data, <clears throat> and completing analysis. Um, and then having the tough discussions that go along with um, processing that data and coming to conclusions. Um, our intent today was to have the first part of a flight readiness review. Um, the goal of that review was to come up with a NASA recommendation on whether we should proceed with the crewed flight test, um, either crewed or uncrewed. Um, our Boeing uh, partners told us that they would be able to execute either option, and they thought that the call belonged to NASA because of our wider um, view of all the risks involved. Um, uh, we conducted a poll. Um, all of the organizations uh, on the polling sheet indicated that uh, they thought we should proceed uncrewed with the, with the flight test. Um, and so uh, our next step will be uh, to, to process uh, toward that uncrewed uh, flight test. Um, to um, finish those preparations, and we'll have another uh, part two of the readiness review um, Wednesday or Thursday next week, we believe, um, to, to make sure that we're, we're ready for undock and to complete the test. Um, we are still in the middle of a test flight. We have to remain vigilant. Um, we need to get the vehicle back on deck, uh, go through the data, and once we've done that, um, we'll, we'll start thinking about our next steps um, for Starliner's next flight. And now I'd like to pass the, the mic to Steve to share more info and more details. Thanks, Ken, and thanks for the kind words. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being here and uh, the public and everybody for following our progress over the summer. Uh, it's It's been a long summer. It's been a long summer for our team. And, I want to first start out by thanking our team who's worked so hard over the summer, um, long hours, uh, weekends, nights, testing, analysis, reviews. I mean, it has just been an incredible effort by the team. Um, we are dealing with a very complex issue with the thrusters, and I'll talk more about that, but it's challenging to predict their performance. It's challenging to predict the temperatures we'll see. And so that's why it's, it's been tough and it's taken the time ever since uh, we docked back in on June 6th to get to this point. Um, very proud of the due diligence that the team has uh, displayed, uh, their perseverance, their fortitude, courage, uh, dedication, resilience as they learn more and we got more data and different results at times than we expected. I especially want to thank the Boeing team and their contractor team, um, Aerojet Rocketdyne, uh, the engine manufacturer, uh, the valve manufacturer, Moog, all their suppliers that participated, uh, along with uh, the NASA workforce. We have brought in expertise from just about every NASA center. We did testing at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Of course, our White Sands test facility did testing on the thrusters. So this has been a huge effort across all of NASA uh, within the commercial crew program and even beyond. Um, determining the position uh, to bring Starliner back on crewed was very difficult for me personally. Uh, we're all committed to the mission, which we started out, which is to bring Butch and Sonny back. But as we got more and more data over the summer, 
and understood the uncertainty of that day, it became very clear to us that the best course of action was to return Starliner uncrewed, and I'll talk about the other aspects of the mission uh, in a little bit. Um, you know, um, the, the bottom line relative to bringing Starliner back is it was just, there was just too much uncertainty in the prediction of the thrusters. If we had a model, if we had a way to accurately predict uh, what the thrusters would do for the undock and all the way through the deorbit burn and through the separation sequence, I think we would have taken a different course of action. But when we looked at the data and looked at the potential for thruster failures with a crew on board uh, and then getting into this very tight sequence of finishing the deorbit burn, which puts the vehicle on an entry, and then immediately uh, maneuvering from that into a SEP sequence to separate the service module and crew module, it was just too much risk with the crew, and so we decided to pursue the uncrewed uh, testing. <clears throat> um, the path forward now is to, as Ken said, work toward the flight readiness review part two. Well, we review now. We know the scope of the mission. We know it's an uncrewed test flight. Uh, we are changing the separation sequence that we planned, and we will review those aspects at the readiness review. We're going to go with a simplified uh, separation technique to get away from station a little more quickly. Um, we'll get to the deorbit burn and execute that nominally. Uh, we have a good setup in terms of the opportunities uh, into the White Sands Space Harbor for a number of opportunities in September. Um, we'll, we'll land or undock in early September, and then we have a lot of work to do uh, relative to the, the rest of the mission, which is Bush and Sunny stay on the space station for some time, and they return on Crew 9. We're configuring that spacecraft with a couple extra, uh, uh, two different seats, so we'll have two different crew members, uh, two crew members on that vehicle, and then we'll have it ready to bring Butch and Sunny home. So they'll be ballast in two seats on the uphill. Um, we also have to work to reconfigure the, the Crew 8 vehicle. When Starliner undocks, it will undock first, and then the Crew 8 vehicle will serve as the lifeboat for Butch and Sunny. We have a configuration on the cargo pallet we'll go put in place. So again, um, we'll get Calypso home <coughs> and ready to do so. We're gonna take uh, our time taking the steps, uh, each step along the way. We'll have an important simulation ahead of that flight readiness review with the flight control team. You know, if you put yourself in their place, they have practiced uh, for two years to bring a crew home on Starliner. There are some differences uh, in executing the undock sequence and the uh, coast to the deorbit burn and the deorbit burn without a crew, and so they're gonna practice that next week. Um, I'm extremely grateful for the commercial crew program, the entire team. Uh, it's an honor to represent them here today, and I'll turn it over to Dana Weigel. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all very much for being here, for your interest in this uh, historic test flight mission and also in the International Space Station. Um, as you heard with the decision to leave Butch and Sonny on board till February, they'll be with us on station for eight months. I think most of you know our normal expedition durations are six months long, but we have had a number of uh, flights with astronauts who've stayed on board with us for 12 months at a time. So this eight month stay is very much within our normal operational experience base. While Butch and Sunny are on board, they'll be doing science, station maintenance, um, they'll execute the SpaceX 31 research and cargo mission, and we may have a couple spacewalks for them towards the end of their expedition. Um, since they've been up there, they've been a welcome set of helping hands. They've already done about 100 hours of work on 42 different experiments, and they've helped us with some of the uh, critical station maintenance that we've had on board. For us, looking forward, the station team is focused on the planning and the rework for the uh, undock, the Starliner undock. As you heard from Steve, that's targeted for early September. Before we hit that undock window, we're gonna do the work to reconfigure the Crew 8 Dragon. We'll probably do that within the next week or so to have that in place for a six crew contingency return capability. And just to reiterate, as Steve said, this just gives us uh, a contingency capability after Starliner departs and before the Crew 9 vehicle arrives. Uh, crew 9 with two crew will launch no earlier than September 24th. We'll do a normal uh, handover uh, between the, the crews and then we'll have Crew 8 undock. After that, we will relocate the Crew 9 vehicle, so that Dragon vehicle will be relocated to open up the forward port for the SpaceX 31 cargo mission, and we're planning that mission 
somewhere in mid-October. In between all of that, we've got a Soyuz crew exchange. That's happening uh, September 11th will be the launch of 73S. That'll be carrying NASA astronaut Don Pettit. And then Tracy Dyson will go home after that Soyuz exchange. So we've got a lot of uh, busy activities in, in front of us this fall. Um, on behalf of the station program, I do want to thank the entire team, the commercial crew program, the Boeing team, and all of our technical teams. They've done a tremendous amount of work over the summer, getting us to the point where we have enough data and enough information to make this really critical and difficult decision that we've made today. So very much appreciated. And uh, as I think all of you know, commercial crew program is uh, critical to the success of ISS. So we appreciate everything they've done. And with that, I'll hand it over to Norm Knight. Thank you, Dana. Uh, I want to thank all of you for your continued interest in our mission. And I want to echo my gratitude for the teams on the ground, both Boeing and NASA, and our astronauts on board for their tireless work and effort with this test flight over many years, especially during the last few months. You know, with the dedication to, or the decision to fly Starliner home uncrewed, the ground teams will still be fully engaged, ensuring Starliner returns safely. You now, while the teams are hard at work here on the ground, we also have Butch and Sonny living and working 260 miles above our planet. They're giving our teams valuable feedback on Starliner. They've served as an integral part of our uh, on-orbit uh, uh, increment. And they demonstrated patience, adaptability, flexibility, resilience, and readiness. That's what you get with an American astronaut. They've been eager to contribute to important conversations. They've asked questions. They've seamlessly become part of the Expedition 71 crew, contributing to the important work on board the International Space Station. You know, when you're charting new paths for exploration, there are highs and lows. We all know this. It's part of exploration and moving forward. Spaceflight is hard. The margins are thin. The space environment is not forgiving. And we have to be right. We all know this. This was a tough problem to be solved, and a decision had to be made. I want you to remember, Starliner is a robust vehicle with excellent flying qualities, as evidenced by the manual demonstration accomplished by Butch prior to docking. And Starliner has performed exceptionally well overall, so please don't lose sight of that. This is a test flight, and the thruster issue and the associated investigations will pay huge dividends in the future for human exploration in a great way when Starliner flies again. I am encouraged by the dedication and resilience both the NASA and Boeing ground teams and, of course, our space flyers exhibit. I talked with Butch and Sonny uh, both yesterday and today. They support the agency's decision fully, and they're ready to continue this mission on board ISS as members of the Expedition 71 crew. I would also be remiss not to mention that this decision also affects the Crew-9 mission and the astronauts that are assigned to fly in that mission uh, in September. Crew-9 mission will now configure Dragon for two crew members and will provide seats for Butch and Sonny to return. We're also working to finalize those crew assignments and update the training plan. Those decisions will may be made public once they are finalized. I would again like to thank all the teams who have designed, built, and now fly Starliner. Going forward, their hard work will continue to pave the path for expanded uh, human spaceflight exploration. Thanks. Thanks, Norm.